outside, and I'll, I'll start you through these steps here. Copy. There you go. Now look over here. Oh, baby. You're going to want to take this one to the grandkids. All right. Get some work here, though. Let's get this baby. All right, Clay, do the honors. Okay, start heading the pumpers. You got good clearance. Copy that. We're starting motion station aft. Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson and Pilot Jim Dutton moving the ammonia tank assembly in towards the external stowage platform to give the two spacewalkers access to the handle that they'll be removing. Good motion. Continue. Keep it coming. Both spacewalkers and the old ammonia tank assembly now on their way to the shuttle's cargo bay. Good view of the old ammonia tank assembly in motion on its way to the shuttle's cargo bay. Both spacewalkers now in place. They're getting ready to receive that ammonia tank assembly. Good motion. Good motion. Okay, stop the end of the payload bay motion. Okay, we'll stop into the payload bay. We'll continue to starboard. This is Naoko, early in the day. Up at Adam in the MPLM. Yes, we have uh, today and tomorrow, and then we will close the MPLM hatch. So we were very busy to reconfigure the MPLM for return. So lots of form, piece of forms, uh, we have to reconfigure for return, which is different location from the resupply. So we are working very hard to pack everything. A couple of uh, shots of video so people could see what these racks look like. That that's a, a resupply rack. It has different uh, different stowage volumes for uh, different bags. This is a resupply platform, an RSP we call it, with different uh, with different size bags. And there are uh, several of those along each side, and they can also rotate. You can see one in the back background there that's uh, rotated out of the way, so we can get behind it because there are bags behind it as well. Anyway, uh, MPLM looks great now. This was first thing in the morning, and now it's uh, much, much better than that. This is Node 1, and we are waiting outside the airlock for it to open um, right now. Tracy and Jim are prepping and raking clay for EVA 3, and uh, pretty soon they'll come out of the... Um, They'll come out, we'll be able to get tools on and uh, get them all ready, put their safer packs on and then get them into the airlock. So TJ and I are waiting. And here you go, the hatch is opening. Uh, that's Jim coming out, and uh, Rick and I spend the night, so we camp out uh, for the spacewalks, and that's to pre-breathe uh, oxygen and help get the nitrogen out of our system so we won't get the bends in any of our spacewalks. good training at uh, Johnson Space Center, and uh, Jim was noting today that though he and I hadn't uh, trained together on the ground, uh, it seemed that uh, our training was put to good work, uh, good use inside the airlock. Well, the robotics went really well again today. Um, we got to uh, go in and release the uh, tank to Clay in the back of the payload bay before he and Rick uh, bolted it down. And uh, Stephanie did a great job of uh, releasing that and getting back off the pin. It's pretty dynamic. Uh, when the guys are in the suits, they uh, have a very hard time stabilizing in positions where the suit doesn't want to be because of the, uh, the pressure inside of it. And Clay just did a really good job uh, holding the tank still for us. Uh, this is Oleg Kotov, the commander of the uh, Soyuz and the uh, International Space Station. He's doing some exercises on the new advanced resistive exercise device. And this is Soichi on the bike. Yeah, I'm doing the CS workout, the uh, aero biking at the speed of uh, 70,000 miles per hour. It was fun, and all oh, the kudos to the, the Aces. Thank you very much. 
is uh, Neoko and I uh, tracing in the MPLM and a great no set of Daddy Metcalf Lundenberger. Yeah, this is uh, one of the interesting things about being in space is that you can use the windows in new and inventive ways and uh, to look back at the uh, station truss assembly from the pilot's window, you have to kind of get on your back and put your face up in the window and it's a really a beautiful view. This is the Gulf of Aden and the mouth of the Red Sea and uh, the east coast of Africa. It's an absolutely stunning contrast between the reds and browns of the sand and the bright blue waters. Uh, really, really stunning views, uh, and you can see the, the high contrast that you get there with the, uh, the Earth limb, and, and uh, there's a shuttle KU antenna in view as well. My job is to just uh, watch everybody, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was helping Dottie out with, uh, with photo TV requirements, and uh, and uh, helping keep track of all, all the uh, small tasks that need to go on and uh, delivering food and coffee to those that wanted it. Uh, we've got such a, a hard-working team up here. They, uh, they use me as a uh, runner and, uh, and uh, to do uh, the most miscellaneous tasks that, uh, that everybody else can't get done because they're so busy doing the important work. And uh, sometimes you just have to make things fit. And uh, as you can see here, Naoko is uh, getting all the foam and bags into place. Um, it was a real team effort to get everything locked down. And there she is being Superwoman with Stephanie. Sometimes the cameraman just needs to watch out. You can see uh, floating in space is a lot of fun, and if you make your work fun, then it has, it's no problem to do it. And I think that all of us could say, no matter uh, how tedious tying foam down may be, uh, it's really fun because you're floating. All I can say is that the STS-131 crew knows how to make foam fun. <laughs> Vision Specialist Naoko Yamazaki here, floating out of the Multipurpose Logistics Module. She's been uh, one of the crew members in charge of the transfer of items to and from that module, getting it ready now to uh, be buttoned up and close the hatches between the two, uh, between the module and the rest of the station so that it can be removed today by the space station's robotic arm and installed back inside the shuttle's cargo bay for return to home. Flight Engineer Suichi Noguchi with uh, Commander Alan Poindexter and Mission Specialist Clay Anderson closing that hatch on the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module. This will not be Leonardo's last visit to the station. It will be coming back up on the STS-133 mission to uh, remain permanently at the station at that point. He'll be able then to act as a storage room for the space station. Eastern Station on the big loop, the uh, hatch is closed. Copy, closed hatch, thank you. Okay, RMS operator from CBM operator, go for RMS to maneuver element. SS RMS operator copies, go to maneuver element. This is Mission Control Houston, just to confirm the four latches that were holding the Leonardo Multipurpose Logistics Module onto the station have been retracted. Leonardo is now under the control of the station's robotic arm, which is being flown by Stephanie Wilson, as well as Naoko Yamazaki, the two STS-131 mission specialists. The uh, robotics officer here in Mission Control confirming that uh, Leonardo is being moved toward Discovery's payload bay.
a great job on 